Miko has inspired me, how Miko told me the answer. Okay, therefore, we have a, a workshop today. But before I give you the factors, I would like to know in your mind, what are the critical success factors of a great speaker? Yes? Confidence. 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 Certainly. Language. Humor. Language. Humor. And what? Communication. Huh? Communication. Communication. Passion. Value. Say that land Lantation. Experience. <laughs> Eye contact. I got that Lantation. Sexy. Sexy, good looking, yes. handsome, smart, <laughs> natural, CC <Yeah>. Dan, <laughs> persuasive, speech and helpful, very helpful. I think you're testing my hearing ability. <laughs> okay, so congratulations. This is the end of this workshop because you have got the answer already. See you next time. <laughs> Actually, you got too many, right? Yeah. You may have to narrow down the five most critical success factors. What would that be? Are you anxious to know the answer? Yes. Yes. Let me do the countdown for you. Speak from your heart, not my heart. <laughs> Actually, the heart is very critical, very critical. So, be patient. Let me review the five critical uh, factors one by one. Number five, presence and energy. What does that mean? That means if you want to be a great speaker, you have to buy a good mirror. <laughs> I forgot to bring mine. So I have the courage to stand up to talk to you. Okay, so actually, when you step on stage, before you utter the first word, you are actually communicating with the audience. Don't you agree? Yes. You are projecting your first image. Therefore, your appearance is crucial important. What do we mean by appearance? That is, you must have oh. Oh. too strong. Low battery. No, 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 no. You see, it's here. But when you move to here, it's oh, okay. disappear. Okay. okay, doesn't matter. So, you have to have an appealing appearance. That means the audience like you. Is it important? No. Yes. Of course, it is important. So you have to have an appealing appearance so that audience like you. And if you look like the boys or girl living next door, that's even better because you are connecting with them already. Okay? So this is important. How about the stage presence? It is also important. But when we talk about the stage presence, we are talking about the team qi shen. That is your confidence level, your energy level, and your sharpness. Okay, because when you when you stand up, you you look like a panda half awake, <laughs> and you look like a fool. Then the heart of the audience will sing, right? So if you have to make an appeal, if you want the audience to like you, you must put up the best of you. Okay? You must communicate through your body gesture, through your confidence level, through your energy level. You tell the audience, I am ready. I am fully charged. Okay? So sit tight. Good things are coming. So you arouse the expectation and curiosity, right? But somebody will say, 
told me, I want to be the most handsome speaker, but I'm not Andy Lau. And the appearance was born. Are you suggesting that I should go to Korea and do some plastic surgery? Yeah. No way, right? But what I mean is appearance, at least you should do this. Dress properly and appropriately. My bottom line is neat and tidy. Is it reasonable? Yeah. Okay, so when you attend, especially uh, a formal meeting, a, a formal conference, and if you're participating in the international speech, you get dressed in t-shirt and a broken pair of jeans. Seems like you haven't washed it for three months. <laughs> No matter how good you are, I don't think you will score high, right? So for me, appearance, not just you look smart or handsome, but you have to dress nicely, decently, and appropriately. Similarly, we also have to behave decently and appropriately. That means your mannerism. In Toastmasters, we have some taboos, right? We don't speak what? Sex. Sex. I thought it's foul language. Oh, we, we, we don't talk about sex. We don't we don't talk about something indecent, right? Okay, so you have to respect that culture. And then you have to show your mannerism and your respect. To whom? No. To yourself. Okay, if somebody stand up here, behave inappropriately, do something not good, I think she's, uh, he or she is not respecting the audience, he's not respecting himself. Okay, so behave decently and with good manner and respect. Choose the words carefully. I always believe from a, from a person's conversation, we can measure how deep the person is. Don't you agree? Yes. Mm. So, if you choose the word carefully, and if you come up and you uh, you can speak uh, uh, beautifully, and you can use rhetorical phrases, can you still remember that that term? Rhetorical uh, words or phrase. In the CC project, I think. Rhetorical. Can I look at it? You see what? Four or five. Of four. Okay? So, in two stars, we are here to learn about the ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, mind your back and mind your words. Okay? So, this is the number five critical success factor. Am I making sense? Yes. Okay, so how about the fourth one? The okay. Very often, I can see speakers, they have a very good story, but when they deliver the lines, they don't know, they cannot um, do it at the appropriate time. Okay? Therefore, even if you have a good story, you still need a very well thought out execution plan. So, the word prop means a plan. But in public speaking, it also means carefully arrange and a and well thought out strategy to put it in practical layman terms. What does that mean? That means the when, what, how. The when, what, and how. Okay, the way it is, plan which time you want to deliver. The what is, at the time of delivery, what are the messages or channels you want to deliver. And the how is more important. It's the methodology you want to use to deliver your message. I give you some examples, like Special effects, uh, like humor, or you break a glass to make some noise, okay? So this is the special effect to go along with the delivery. 
or you can choose to have uh, raising your voice, acting the energy level. But I must say, after attending the human speech contest yesterday and also the evaluation uh, contest today, I think energy management is also one of the critical lessons you have to learn. Energy management doesn't mean you are talking at the pitch of your voice. That is, that is not energy management, okay? Like driving a car, I always use this metaphor. If you can drive fast, doesn't mean that you are a good driver. Don't you agree? You have to drive safe, right? So in speaking, a lot of the postmasters, they think if I speak loudly, even Baumai, <laughs> then I'm powerful. But this is not. This may amount to nuisance. So energy management means just like singing a song, you will have rhythm. Sometimes you add energy, but sometimes you can deliberately reduce your energy level so as to create a contrast. Okay? So if you have high energy level all the way, that means you are either crazy or you have taken some drugs before your speech. Okay? Or you are, you, you, you are a hyper. You know what I mean? So you have to control or manage your energy. Not just shout, but you create a contrast, the rhythm. And also a lot of people like to have language and echo. That is, you quote something which is meaningful and inspiring at the beginning of the speech, and then towards the conclusion of the speech, you also repeat that quotation. This is, I think, it's very, um, uh, how do I say? I assure you, I assure you. I would like to give you one example. I, I actually forgot the name of that speech, but the way that lady used this technique really impressed me. And I still remember this particular part. Okay? In a speech, in a, in a, in a opening, she quote something from the world is flat. She said, in the plain of Africa, Every morning, when the first sunbeam reaches the ground, the gazelles will run as fast as they could. Because if they don't, they will be the meal for the lion. Every day, in the plain of Africa, when the first sunbeam reaches the ground, the lions, they will run as quick as they could. Because if they don't, they will have an empty stomach that day. Wow! Isn't it meaningful? Mm. Even if you were the prey or the predator, you have to try your very best. Okay? So, to me, this is a very good and very inspiring opening. And after that, she delivered all the contents and she ran up with the same thoughts. Whoa! I think that is one of the most perfect uh, echo. I've ever come across. So I still remember uh, that special art. So actually, if you can use these kind of techniques appropriately, you can achieve the wow effect. Okay? So my number four critical success factor is a thought. Don't spoil your, your, your speech if, uh, without any well thought out execution plan. Okay? How about the number three critical success factor? Skills and techniques. Okay? Um, if you want to be a quick speaker, I must say the minimum charge should be you should master at least the basic skills. Agree? So, what do you mean by the basic skills? We are talking about the verbal skills and the non-verbal skills. How many of you is confident enough to tell me 
that you have mastered.